Hey, I feel like I'm in an awkward situation because I'm doing a lot of work online right now and I'm just writing blog after blog after blog and reading and a lot of the media is like going after this the Paris attacks that happened just this last week where like 140 people were killed 300 more people were, are, are like hurt right now and it's like rallying people to go to war and conflict and all this and it's like I spend my time focusing on the solutions, which is beyond the conflict, which is like we've already gotten past wanting to kill each other. We're working together to survive. The universe is already out there to kill us. We're lucky to have an atmosphere. We have to work together to continue to survive. I'm an advocate of healing cancer by eating the right foods rather than cutting it out. Because I feel like when you cut it out, there's a chance it's, if you're still eating the wrong foods, it's just going to come back. And you're just going to have to cut it out again and cut it out again. It's like, if you live right, then you don't have to worry about killing yourself. And that goes for the global organism of humanity, the super, you know, the earth, everything. If, if we're doing it right, we don't have to fight over resources. We can be printing. I mean, they, they've actually built molecular printers where you can print, like from molecules, you can print oil, you can print pizza, you can print whatever you need, water. If you need it, you can make it. And we could, we can all have it. But if you know, when there's profits involved, and corporations want to be raking in this a large amounts of money, so we're stuck in this system. And I'm like, I don't even want to acknowledge it. I see this every. I feel like every time I open my mouth about Paris or about about terrorism, I'm just perpetuating it. You know. But I think what I'm realizing is, if you're if all I can see is the exit, if I'm in a, in, in, a, in a cave, in a maze, and all I can see is the exit, I'm never going to get there because I can't see the maze in front of me and the walls that I need to, to, to navigate to get to that exit. If all I can focus on is this exit, I'm never going to get there. I have to pay attention to what's right in front of me, and that is conflict. There is some fucking military armed conflict. And what I believe is that, tell him, Johnny. You tell them what you think it is. Everybody wants to get fed. That's what it comes down to, right? I think what... what As far as I can tell, what's happening is... Syria does not have a central bank. So the central banks in the world want to make central banks everywhere in the world consolidate their power of finance... And then have this global monetary system, the Federal Reserve, the International Monetary Fund, the Bank of International Settlements, the Central Bank of England, the Central Bank of London, the Central Bank of Australia. Iraq didn't have a central bank when Saddam was in power, and Saddam didn't want to install a central bank, so they tried to bribe him to do it. He said, fuck you, so they went in with the military. In the 90s, they took out his military, then they were like, now capitulate, and he was like, fuck you, and then they were like, all right, let's kill him. They wiped him out, installed a central bank. And now the country has no, no, no power structure. The power structure is not there. So there's this vacuous conflict. Similar to Afghanistan, there was no central bank. We took our military and installed a central bank. Cuba right now does not have a central bank. North Korea doesn't have a central bank. These are like countries that haven't given over to this world money system of inflation and interest that's been raping us. Why is our, you know, we shouldn't have a national debt of $18 trillion. We should, our money should just be normal. We shouldn't have to pay back with interest fake money that, you know, they just print money out of thin air. They don't even print it. They just make zeros on a computer screen, and then we have to pay that back with interest to this to this, this private company that isn't beholden to any government called the Central Bank. You know, the, the, the Bank of International Settlements is the the brain of these central banks. So... We're being manipulated. Our military is being manipulated to install these banks, bomb, go on these bombing campaigns, just disrupt and destroy people, and then they're lashing back. So the World Trade Center was, you know, I don't even know. The World Trade Center, I've got some serious issues with when those came down because they look like controlled demolition, the way they just fell straight down in a free fall. Buildings don't do that if they get hit by explosives. They, they topple and they crumble, and then they might, like, half fall off or something, but... 
the entire structure just fell in a free fall very just zoo and all the firemen down below are like oh my god there was these huge explosions and then the building came down so like they acknowledge that there was something some sort of detonations in the building before everything came down well after any after the planes hit so it looks like it was a controlled demolition who who installed the explosives I don't know. Maybe it was the Saudi Arabians. Maybe it was the U.S. government. Maybe it was the CIA, which is like not the U.S. government. It's technically it's part of the government, but then technically it's really not part of the government. It doesn't have to answer. There's organizations that don't have to answer to anyone. And when it comes down to it, it's who has the money is running the world, not the governments. I mean, you could say that the military is enforcing it, but the military is they, they want to serve. They don't want to make decisions. They want to do what they're told. That's the point of being in the military is you learn that you're supposed to do what you're told. And that goes all the way up to the top, to the commander, who's the president, who's still being doing what he's told because he's a servant of the people. He's supposed to do what he's told. And when these people are being told to do these crazy things, they do them. So who's telling them? Who, who decided that these buildings came down? Was it Osama bin Laden? Was it these freedom fighters from the Middle East that hated capitalism so much because of all how it gave so much to the top 0.1% and so little to the other 40% of the world? Why there's 4 billion people living right now without internet? Or was it like we're supposed to think that and it was like set up by a government as a false flag operation just like Operation Northwoods if you don't know what that was in 1962 the CIA and the Joint Chiefs went to President Kennedy with a plan to commit terrorist acts against United States citizens by United States military or private companies that was hired by the military and make it seem like the terrorist acts were committed by Cubans and they were going to trick people into thinking that Cubans committed terrorism against American citizens. It's called Operation Northwoods. So search that right now as you can read along as I'm talking about it. And then that would rally the people to get angry about Cuba. And then they would, they would get the green light to go to war with Cuba. Kennedy said no. And it failed. And it was classified. Eventually it was declassified. So now we see, yes, it's called a false flag where... A military puts on the, the, the outfit of the enemy, the uniform of the enemy, or carries the flag of the enemy, does some horrible thing, and everyone thinks the enemy did it, but it was their own military, it wants them to, to get angry at the other people so that the, the citizens will support a war. And this is like a, has been happening for thousands of years. It's a common tactic to get people to go to war is you commit crimes against your own fucking people. So I'm I'm thinking that that's, you know, if it was a controlled demolition and the government, like, doesn't even want to admit or, or consider outwardly that it, it looks like it was a controlled demolition, you have thousands of engineers, architects and engineers, saying, look, it's a controlled demolition. I mean, we've seen thousands of these. I understand high-rise steel buildings, impacts. We, we do this for a living. That That's a controlled demolition. Building 7 was a controlled demolition, just falls straight. So... If they really refuse to acknowledge it, then they must be, not that they must be complicit. It doesn't mean that because they are, they could be stupid. They could, but I don't think so. I think that it was a poorly planned false flag operation to get people to go to war. And now we're, now we're there. And I'm not saying that the Paris was, in fact, I never even thought that it never crossed my mind until just now when I'm saying it wasn't that. You know, who's to say what the fuck it was? But people are like, the French, now the French are bombing in Syria. As just like immediately. It was this emotional knee jerk reaction similar to what we did after 9 11. And I'm seeing like kids crying because their house got bombed. They don't know where their parents or their her brother is. And you think. You think this is going to like solve something maybe. Maybe that's what these these people are like. Oh, we're so angry. Kill. And it's like all we're doing. If we if we support this, all we're doing is presenting more destruction, more anger and more grounds for a 9-year-old that's going to be become a, a a terrorist, a violent 
you know, going to lash out of violence. If you had nothing, if your house was taken away from you, your money was taken away from you and everything you had was taken away from you. And then there were, there were military out there, like uh, Russian military or, or you see the Russians are even our allies, but just some, some military you didn't understand some foreign or even domestic military, like suppressing you. What would you do? What would you do eventually after, after years of that? And you know, I mean, what would, what would you do? You would have to try to win your freedom. We didn't become free by sitting around. This happened because of a violent, bloody revolution where people picked up fucking weapons and killed to establish a sense of peace. And that's what these people in the Middle East are doing. They don't want to live in poverty. They don't want to be oppressed. They don't want their oil like... You look at like Iran, you think Iran is like a bad guy or something. But in the 50s, Iran dem democratically elected this guy named Mossadegh and he wanted to nationalize the oil reserves and say, OK, from now on, all the Iranian, the money that we're getting from our oil is going to the people. The U.S. government, the CIA was like, mm, no, that's not good for us because we want that oil. So they had him overthrown and they installed the Shah of Iran, who was like pro-US, but he was this crazy religious guy. And then for decades, this crazy religious guy just turned Iran into this crazy religious state. But, it, but the US was making profit. And like, that's what they're trying to do with Bashar al-Assad. They're, they're trying to, he, he was like, well, I'm not, I don't want to take it any further. I don't know what, if he was, Demo I believe he was democratically elected. I don't know. That's what they did with Gaddafi. He didn't want to play ball. They installed a central bank in Libya. Like, it's fucking insidious. I think the way to solve this is to, first of all, cease the bombing campaigns. Open a dialogue with the enemy and establish peace by offering them domestic support. It seems crazy. I mean, it seems, especially to people that are already in the mindset of war, but that's the way you, you, I mean, like, have you, do you ever play video games? Have you ever played Civilization? Have you heard of that game before? It's basically a simulation game, turn by turn. You you move your armies, your 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 units around, and and you can you can win with democracy. You can unite the planet and and win, or you can you can conquer the planet and win. And it's like up to you every time you play how you want to play. And yeah, you can conquer every other fucking capital, and just have a world of one country. Or you can have a world of a thousand, a fifty a thousand countries all working together. And what it comes down to is, do we speak the same language? It doesn't really matter where the, the, the imaginary lines are drawn. Do we speak the same language? Can we, can we, can we communicate? Mass media, that's what this is for. Communication. But we have to stop the bombing. Do not support conflict conflict breeds more conflict if you want to beat your opponent into submission simulate it play a game go do a sparring match I mean I like MMA fighting mixed martial art fighting I, I like it I like watching a guy get a fucking roundhouse to the face going down and then the other guy launches on him just starts punching straight down using the ground as his stopping point with the guy's head between his fist and the ground I mean it excites me it's like yeah I like seeing a bully get his ass kicked part of me but when it comes to like the survival of the human race, that's a game. We got to let that go and make sure everyone's fed and happy and like willing to do more to survive. So you can't, I mean, even if right now, even if take, okay, assume that first of all, the word terror, George Washington was a terrorist. He was branded a terrorist by the King of England. He was a, he was an extremist terrorist. Of course, he won the war. 
So history writes itself backwards, and he's a hero. He's a freedom fighter. You know, he's a revolutionary. So this, these people are doing the same thing. Hitler was the same. Hitler would have been a hero if, if Germany had won the war. You just look at it in reference. So these people are... If you, if you take all, like, the ISIS fighters... I, I even hate this term ISIS. It's just this crappy, random phrase put out about people that are, like, happen to be part of the... Like, that, that support Islam and want, like, it, the peace of Islam to, to supplant the violence of Christianity in their mind, you know, obviously they don't, they're not there to hurt people. They're there to, to make the world a better place. Everyone is when it comes down to it. So if you took all these people, all these ISIS fighters or all these, these, these people that, you know, don't speak English that are, and you just killed them all, all of them, just like one day you snap your fingers and all of them died. All of their children would grow up and try to kill you. Or, or a bunch of them would. It doesn't end. The killing doesn't end the violence. You don't kill someone and expect that that doesn't have repercussions. And I'm thinking like World War II, you know, we killed a lot of people. But at the same time, the, the Nazis were surrendering because they they were you know some of the generals were trying to kill Hitler they knew that Hitler was insane at at one point but even that you know the violence just led to a cold war like a 40 year cold war uh, and then uh, which you know fucking we're in a place right now where the US the Russians the Chinese can work together to create like a nas- a global Packed in the Arctic. Like we can focus, I think the, the, the three of us can focus on making the Arctic a safe global park, basically. You know, that's, that's one thing that we can do together. Oh my God. This is why I don't focus on this stuff because it's like, you know, 10 years ago, it, it, I was like, I was shocked to see people that are pro-war. Who Who is fucking pro-war? Who is like fucking pro-killing someone? That doesn't make any sense. And also, you have to keep in mind, man, it, what we do now... And what we support now comes back around. So if we support murder now, I mean, we're talking about drone warfare. The Chinese have like drone submarines with nuclear missiles. This is like, you don't, don't just abjectly treat these people like they're not human with intelligence and fucking manipulable thumbs that can push push buttons and build electronics because they can and the amount of information that people have access to it's an equal playing field don't fuck with people because they will fuck with you it doesn't stop in Paris you don't I'm just like Silence doesn't get anything done. I can't sit around and not say anything and expect that people are just going to figure out that meditation, calmness, and trust are the key to coexistence. I have to break out of my meditative state and tell you. Hey, and you're probably cool, man. I'm not blaming you. I'm, well, no, I'm not blaming you. I'm, if anything, I'm blaming myself for not being aggressive enough. I'm frustrated and I don't want to take it out on you because we're working together. We have to work together. We have no choice. We are here together. So they've developed something called Li-Fi, which is like Wi-Fi, but it's with light instead of 
radio frequency. And by using oscillating frequencies of LED light, they can transmit electricity to a solar panel with LED light and internet. So one person puts up a solar panel and they get internet and electricity from the same fucking light source. And this can be like, this can revolutionize the way that we have internet. We can actually bring internet to the half of the, the, four, the four billion people in the world that don't have it right now. I think that we're really poised to be able to bring internet to everyone. And if people all have internet, we'll stop fighting. We'll find a place where we can work together on more constructive things than hurting each other. And we'll be able to escape the planet if and when an asteroid were to strike or when the sun gets so big that it swallows the earth. Which, by the way, I think that we can feed chemicals into the sun to keep it the same size, uh, theoretically. I don't know what chemicals exactly. Gold, hydrogen, whatever it needs. Oxygen. But the expansion seems to be a result of the depletion. Um, so if we replete it, then I think that we can sustain it. Terraform Mars. Use VR to explore the cosmos through satellite imagery as if you're there, you know, together. Because I'm telling you what, man, Islam is pretty phenomenal. Muhammad was a pretty legit dude. I mean, he came from, from, from not, I mean, he was like a religious, uh, like a persecute, whatever you want to call him. He was like, he was like a, like, like really looked down on and kind of spit on with his group, his Bedouins. They were like really kind of trash. And he, he just basically was like, you know what? The power of people overcomes the power of hate. A small group of, people that care can do more than a huge group of people that fucking hate and he showed them that with conflict but then when it came down to it and they, they were already they were like ter they thought they were, he was going to kill them all yeah i mean what i'm talking about is when he he led his bedouins they kicked him out of mecca he and his 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 tribe he was like this young kid this like teenager so he got a, he rallied his tribe and, and other tribes together and he was like this is so fucked up there's there's this there's one God that's uniting us all. Let's do something. And they all went back and took Mecca by force, killed a bunch of people in conflict because the, you know the same people that were persecuting them. But then when the people were like, "Oh God, we're all dead. We're all doomed." All the women and children were like, "Oh God, oh God." He was like, "No, we're all one people. Let's unite." I mean, he was he got it. You know, he took he understood the same thing Jesus understood. There's this unifying field theory I guess you could say Einstein who was a pretty religious dude but also a scientist got that there's this unifying field of energy that vibrates and whether it's sound which it seems to be I'm starting to read that it's sound that's actually can penetrate about black hole and actually when sound travels through a black hole because it's so dense it goes faster than the speed of light and there's this theory that that's the root that vibration is the root of all matter sound so there's this vibration there's this underlying you know i mean it's 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 affecting all of us and everything we do is affecting everything else and when you start to get that man there's no reason to hurt people it becomes about what you can do to better yourself and everyone else in the process and when we're all living like that the world becomes a better place yeah we're in a mass extinction right now there's like lots and lots of of animals and plant life are, are gone that used to be here. I don't know how many, if it's like a thousand species a day are just disappearing off the planet. There's some really freaky number of, 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 of forms of life that are just dying off at will. And there's probably other forms of life that are evolving that, you know, we constantly are finding new life, but like, so we're going through a mass extinction. And if we end up having to re-engineer this stuff, like elephants, if all the elephants die off, have you ever seen an elephant live? We'll have to re-engineer it. And I know that we can, but if we work together, we can. It's never too late as long as we're alive, but I don't want to go through a nuclear holocaust. I don't want to have to pick up the pieces out of the ashes. We're too advanced. We're too good. We're too here right now. 
We can do this.